Welcome to What Are We Playing This Week, the show where I tell you what games you should be playing this week if you don't have anything better to do and you're really in the mood for something with a theme. This week we've got World War I games, yes, World War I. The conflict that ended not because someone won it, but because there were no people left to fight it. So to offset that horrible tragedy, the first game I'm gonna recommend to you is quite colorful and animated and maybe a bit cute. It's Valiant Hearts The Great War, a game made and published by Ubisoft which is set during World War I and it's about the war but not as you may think about it. Unlike most games about wars, it's not an action game, it's not a shooter, it's not even a strategy game, it's an adventure puzzle game where people are, well, I'm not gonna give you any spoilers about it, but it's about a few soldiers that participate in this conflict and, well, they have each their own story and there's also this dog in it, which, okay, I won't give you any spoilers because, well, how shall I put this? Um, you already know how it's gonna end. I, I've told you how the war ended, so there's not really that much I can say without already spoiling everything about this game. Needless to say, it is quite good. It's one of the few examples of a Ubisoft Studio actually making something interesting. You can find Valiant Hearts on Steam for the price of 15 euros, which is kind of a lot, but maybe with a few special offers it's gonna be a fine game. Up next if you're in the mood for a first person shooter about World War I, one that puts you right there in the trenches with your friends in multiplayer then there's Verdun 1914-1918 which is basically a recreation of the war in a multiplayer FPS game. One that, well how shall I put this, it doesn't really try to be Call of Duty, it more tries to be something similar-ish with the Red Orchestra series. They even had an event last Christmas where you couldn't actually kill the enemy anymore because it was Christmas, it was that thing about uh, two sides of the conflict not wanting to fight on Christmas so you just threw snowballs at them. It's quite a fine game, also costs about 22 euros so again get it if you're really in the mood for a World War 1 game that's mostly in multiplayer FPS format. If you want a single player FPS format about World War One, that's also an action game, well I'm gonna give you something that's kind of insane. It's Necrovision The Lost Company, which is a sequel to Necrovision that adds palatable aircraft from World War One and tanks from World War One, which you could pilot. Also this game has monsters, demons, skeletons, undead. Basically it's World War One as if it were told by Wolfenstein. It's maybe not the best game ever made, but it's kind of insane. So you've got to appreciate that about it. It's on Steam now for 7 euros. Lastly, if you want a strategy game that's not just another grand strategy game, because basically most grand strategy games about World War 1 end up being mostly the same, then there's just plainly World War 1. It's more or less a modified version of Blitzkrieg, which is a classic World War 2 game, which is basically a sequel to Sudden Strike, which was an even classicer, if that's a word, World War 2 game. This game is set in World War 1. It's a real time tactics game, though they call it a real time strategy game because for some reason that's what they call it. It's tactics because you don't produce the units, you already arrive on the map with them. That's the difference between tactics and strategy, in my humble opinion. Strategic would also imply the resource management aspect. Still, as a game about war, it's quite well done. Again, if you've played Sudden Strike or Blitzkrieg, you know what you're getting into. The graphics are great, it's that 2D isometric thing that games used to have a long time ago when they looked superb no matter how much they've aged. You can find World War 1 on Steam right now for just 5 euros. And well that's it for World War 1, hope you enjoyed, well if you live 
through it, no, you didn't enjoy it, and if you're watching this, then hi, grandpa. But they're most of them fine, quite fine games, which deserve a look over. Because honestly, this setting doesn't really get that much attention compared to World War II, because, well, this one didn't have Nazis. And it'll kind of make you feel a bit bad about shooting people that you know aren't irredeemably evil as Nazis are. Well, most of them were. Also, no Cyber Hitler in this one. Sorry. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it. Unlike some game developers, Ubisoft, I'll actually listen to your feedback.